Hey guys, Ed Budd here. It's time for the Hoka Oni Oni Mac 4 to shine on the long run. Stay tuned for some classic Ed Budd running footage a little later. And this video marks the 500th on the channel. And also we've just gone over the 19,000 subscriber mark. So thank you very much to all of you that have subscribed and that have been tuning in over the last few weeks. Remember, if you haven't done so already, guys, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos for you. And it really does help the channel out if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. So 12 miles today on 19.3 kilometers, averaging about eight minutes per mile and five minutes per kilometer. Gotta say, it was awful conditions out there yet again. A really stern test for the Hoka Only Only Mac 4 on my feet in the very wet weather. Some 24 mile an hour winds there in very blustery conditions. Typical May weather here in the UK. I kept this a very controlled effort today, guys. Just keeping things in the aerobic heart rate level. I knew that if I tried to push things, I was probably gonna do myself a bit of damage actually because the wind and the rain weren't really conducive to running any sort of fast paces. Keeping that heart rate around about 136 beats per minute average across the run today. I think I only maxed out about 144 beats per minute when I was going up one of the ascents, whereas around about four or five miles in. It's pretty much uphill all the way on this test route that I've used. It's one that I've used over the course of lots of long run shoe tests in the past months. More progress today on keeping the cadence very high on these longer runs, trying to improve my running efficiency and keeping things consistent, but super happy with the effort today. Getting some miles in for the week, despite there being some really rough conditions. There's a couple of times I looked out there and thought, really, shall I really go out there? But I enjoyed it once I got out there. So how did the shoe hold up over the long run? Upper wise, I was really impressed. Actually, it didn't soak up too much of the water that was out there. Still felt nimble and relatively light after a good rain soaking. Dry, this one's about 264 grams or 9.3 ounces. I think it only took on about 20 grams of weight from the water and there was a lot of it. The new laces that I put in here really have improved the fit of the Mac 4 quite dramatically. It's certainly on par, I would suggest, with the Carbon X2, though a much better and more fitting upper than the Rocket X. No signs of discomfort at any stage on the run today, so very impressive. I found the Mac 4 plush enough for the long run. There was no change in terms of the tension of the laces and a good clean report card in terms of upper. Not sure I really need this section on the end here. Maybe I could saw it off at some point and save a bit more weight, but that wasn't the real problem that I had today with the Mac 4 on the long run. Midsole wise, I've got to be honest, I'm coming around a little more to the sandwich of ProFly and that rubberized EVA. It's not too narrow a footbed either. I felt it was much more comfortable over the miles than I did the Clifton 7, for example. That shoe just really didn't work for me in a whole load of different ways. People say it's cushioned, I just never really felt that. I didn't feel it was that soft. And the arch, well, yeah, it really caused me some discomfort, the Clifton 7. So certainly the Mac 4s got the crown over the top of that one. Around the mile 10 mark, I think I said to myself mentally, I could probably do with a little bit more cushion here in the forefoot. It did feel a little bit like the ProFly was starting to bottom out somewhat. The top layer felt a little bit like it had done its job and wanted to pack it in for the day. Just not quite as compressive and resilient enough at that point. So I think about 10 miles, probably as far as I'd want to go in this shoe again. I have to say the midsole performed really well at that steady pace though today. The Mac 4 seemingly a very versatile shoe. It can take stuff between those easy recovery paces through to higher paced efforts, 30 seconds or so off of my target half marathon pace. As such, I think for more daily activities, it's a real winner. Just not quite enough cushion for me going past 10 miles. I think that would be its limit. I just don't really think it's the forte for this shoe. I think if you want something for some shorter distance stuff, but it's a little more nimble then this is the one. Way better performance though in terms of midsole and underfoot feel than the Clifton 7 on the long run. Outsole wise, it actually held up incredibly well in the wet slippery conditions today. Grass, mud, concrete, road, you name it, it was it was just fine. I didn't think it was going to be all that good in fairness considering the very quick wear that I've seen on the rubberized EVA in the outside. But that wear slowed down after a few miles and today I was treated to a very sure-footed effort. Almost boat-like with the drainage. I think those channels there provide enough space for the water to sort of escape 
and you're left with quite a lot of surface area. It's a good landing platform there. I never really felt that I was unstable in any way. And at some point, some of the pavements were really, really slick. So yeah, certainly applaud it's to the Mac 4 outsole. On paper, it doesn't really look like it's gonna work out all that well. Certainly in these types of conditions, but it just goes to show you can't judge a book by the cover. Stable and assured, so a very successful part of the shoe on the long run today. Value wise, I certainly think there's worse out there for your money. As such, I think if you're not looking for a long run shoe, but something you can use on a more daily basis, the Mac 4 ticks a lot of the boxes. 10 miles actually might be a long run to some people. So yeah, it felt okay for me up to that point. But do bear in mind, I'm quite a slight gentleman. Those heavier built runners may find that the cushion bottoms out a little bit earlier. Nimble enough for me though, and it lacks that bulk in the upper, which on some shoes becomes a sponge and just gets completely saturated and waterlogged in no time. I think at 125 earth credits, it's certainly a very attractive option. There's a lot of shoes around that sort of price range. Would I pick this over the Rebel 2? Unlikely, really. You saw my video the other week comparing the two together. I think the Rebel 2's got a bit of an edge on this one. Though I would suggest the upper's perhaps a little bit more plush. And if you're a Hoka fan, then I think you've already made your decision. I think once I got a few more miles into the Carbon X2, I'll do a direct comparison between this and that shoe. It's certainly close, it really is. What say you on the Mac 4 viewers? Is it a rate or a hate on the long run? Or a sharp value purchase for the short sessions only? Let me know in the comments. And here's some footage of me running around in the wet weather once again. Hey guys, long run today. Back to beautiful windy weather in May 2021, here in Yeovil. Been waiting for about eight minutes per mile pace today. About 12 miles. The wind's gonna be a, an issue, I can tell already. This bit here normally is quite sheltered, but even through here, it's pretty hard going. I can't believe it's like this. Hopefully it will change, though the weather forecast doesn't look that great up to now for the next week. So going with the Hoka Mac 4 today. Hopefully I won't regret that decision. More minimal shoe, I suppose, in terms of cushion. We'll see what chops it's got for the long run. Just coming up on a mile now. I don't think they're really designed for the long run, but we shall see. There's this really irritating balance at the moment between thinking you might get really wet because it looks like there's going to be loads of rain and then feeling like you're too hot. It's such an irritating situation. It's like smack bang in the middle. But we're keeping it nice and steady. About eight minute miles, which is what I wanted. The classic airfield stretch, which is uh, very windy. That wind socks are really blowing around almost as much as me. Oh, nice, easy long run. Nice, nice and easy. Oh. I'm actually really glad I didn't go for a heavier shoe today. Mac 4 is nice and light, and if I'd gone for a heavier shoe, it would have made this effort even harder. And it's hard enough already. So there we go, every cloud has a silver line. We're about six miles in now, so I'll start my way back. It's an out and back, this one. And most of it's downhill, and I'm looking forward to that. I've just gone up on eight miles, guys. Really, really enjoying myself out here. It's wonderful. I certainly feel refreshed now. I'm awake. I'm very, very wet. Come to Britain for your summer holidays. Run with Ed Buff in the pouring rain. Uh, home straight now, a couple of miles. And uh, yeah, a nice shower. Okay. Oh, I had a whale of a time. Don't believe any of it, guys. I was really enjoying myself out there. A musical interlude for you. One of my favourite albums of all time is Bo Diddley's Beach Party. Now this was recorded live, apparently, at some beach concert in the early 60s, and it features the blueprint, really, of rock and roll. It's got an incredible atmosphere about the recording. I mean, it's very lo-fi, guys. Don't be expecting something sounding, you know, really polished and everything. It's warts and all type of stuff. The best track on there is Hey Bo Diddley. It starts off with this sort of picked tremolo type guitar sound, and then the band sort of pick up speed as the track goes. The vocals are distorted, the drums are pounding and there's just such energy and electricity there. It's one of those concerts I just wish if I had a time machine I could 
could go back and be there and experience it. Around about 2 minutes 23, there's one of the best sections of music that I've ever heard. Like the band just sort of weld together into this proto heavy metal sort of sound. It really is something to behold, and every time I hear it, it gives me goosebumps. I think if it wasn't for Bo Diddley, then you wouldn't have bands like Battles, maybe like Black Sabbath, all those types of groups. He was the innovator. It's dance music and it's metal and it's all sorts of other types of music, and he created it there and then. Do go and check that one out, guys. Bo Diddley's Beach Party. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video today, guys. I very much appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, help the channel out by clicking that subscribe button and also the bell below for notifications if I launch those new videos. Help get us to the top of most of the pop of most by giving this video a thumbs up like and also sharing it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you 